Well, once Article 50 has now been triggered, so we're in new realms, new territory. Uh, I think a lot of the speculation in the markets has led to weakness in the pound. It has led to uncertainty, but at the same time, we've seen record highs in the FTSE. So I would say that it's really important that we focus on not just what's going to happen in the bigger picture, so the trade deals, you know, et cetera, et cetera, but what happens in the UK now. We have to control inflation. We have to talk about interest rates, normalizing the economy like we have done in the US or in the process of doing. The real tough point now for the UK is to all be united and to get behind what, you know, what is the common aim, and that is to get the best deal for the UK as a whole, to do the best trade deals, to make the best kind of partners, and to go and seek opportunities where we've perhaps been lazy or perhaps been un willing to do by being part of the European Union. I think that the FTSE has every opportunity to correct from these higher levels. We're going to have to talk about interest rates going up at some point. And historically, you know, that is bad for the, the markets. The FTSE's never felt comfortable above 7,000. I only really believe it's holding above 7,000 because of the movement in the US. But again, these things are cyclical and they take time. It's been 10 years since a crash. And generally, every seven years, we see some sort of major correction. We haven't seen that yet. So the correction is coming. So if we've seen the pound drop and the FTSE go up, maybe we see the correlation now, the FTSE drops, gets back to more reasonable normal levels. People pull out of risky investments, which the shares and the indices are, and put it back into cash. And again, if we have an inkling that the Bank of England and Mark Carney will put rates up, then this is gonna bring additional strength back into the pound, which is dramatically oversold in one event. So I think there's a lot of upside in the pound, a lot of potential downside in the FTSE, but what we do know is if markets move, there will be opportunities for short-term traders to make money. So really picking an idea where the markets will be in six, 12, 18 months, two years time is incredibly difficult. There'll be a lot of movement on, on both directions for the pound and the FTSE. But I think net-net, we're too high in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the indices and they will correct to more reasonable levels. Uh, I believe really about five and a half thousand is much more comfortable uh, place for the FTSE to be in range between that and 6,000. And I really do believe that the pound, once the trade deals start to come in, and we see that, the, not the contagion effect, but the, the fear in the FX markets move into the euro. The euro will head much more towards parity, a lot more quickly than the pound would head towards new lows. 120 is the absolute low I think the pound will hit short term. 130, 145, and I think 164 is a key level that I think that the, the uh, pound will get to against the dollar probably within two years. Again, bold, uh, big movement, but I think with the currency so massively oversold, once the good news starts to come in uh, from these trade deals, then there'd be very little to stop the, uh, the, the big investment firms, the big uh, speculators, and, and even central banks getting involved, uh, you know, buying big, big, big chunks of the pound.